Um, but yeah, so on today's call, we're going to um check in on membership and recruitment. Oh my goodness, come on, phone. And then hear a bunch of updates from about a bunch of our priorities from the city and talk about our strategic plan. And so does that sound good? Any um and so first, if we want to review and approve the minutes from January 4th and January 18th, I think those were the most recent ones that we have minutes for. A different world. Jeremy Bodry, Lauren Hurl, Helen Kahn. Right. Well, I guess um, I'm the only one who was there. <laughs> and all second? Does that count? No, um, before, before, sorry. <laughs> um, before we take any votes, um, just because of the committee composition, um, it appears that there are three vacancies. Yeah. Is that the understanding? So there are a total of eight members. Great. Okay. And so if that's the case, then you do not have a quorum. Okay, so it's of the total seats, not of the total participants. Correct. Okay. Um. Okay, so we we will probably never ever again have a quorum. I mean, yeah. <laughs> well, that was like, the first thing on our agenda was just of talking about recruitment and membership, and so we I've I've had a couple of conversations with folks who maybe want to join, but I haven't heard anything that they've applied or that they're they've been approved or anything like that um I don't know if city council has looked at any applications or if there have been any applications um I can certainly check in with Mary to see what we have um on file um I am not aware of anybody at this point that has applied although I'm certainly happy to check and come back with that cool thanks so okay. how many summer how many people are we trying to recruit in order to get up to a quorum at this point? We need to get, okay. I right? You said, you said there's three. Vacancies. Yeah. So based on the, the website, that's what it says. Um, I do want to take a look back through our records. We are um, really reviewing committee membership um, and trying to streamline process in terms of, you know, all the things that, you know, this committee is dealing with recruitment, retention, um, making sure that the terms are synced up, you know, making sure that we can kind of really, shore things up and uh, make sure that the process is really working. Um, and so that being said, the, the only thing that I would want to do is just take a look back um, through the file and not necessarily rely explicitly on the website, but based on what I can see here, that's what it is, um, the three seats. Well, yeah, for a total of eight. How has the recruitment been going for other folks? Anything to note? Well, I sent out, I, I talked to Tom McCone. I think I'm- Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. He, that he would mention it to his book group. I haven't heard from him, and I don't know if you have. <clears throat> um, I have well, anybody associated, I don't know anybody on that. I mean, he didn't give me names. He just said he would bring it to his group and sort of share that around. <clears throat> I did send out one letter to another person that I know of but I don't know personally and did not get any response at all. So I guess that means no interest, but. Yep. Um, and I, re I reached out directly to two people from the community that I know and uh, neither was, is available right now to add anything on their plate. Um, and I'll keep thinking about it. That being said, I'm also recruiting for our advisory board because we are low right. on folks there. So I've got competing interests, um, but I'm trying to think specifically about um, folks who would, you know, for this, because it's such a specific, uh, specific work. Um, so I'm trying to think differently about those two ways that I'm recruiting and the people that I'm looking for. So for example, and maybe this will be helpful to hear, um, I met with the Waterbury um, town manager and he is, is, hooked me up with somebody that he that will likely join our cab so i'm going to go to like around in the other towns that we serve to get representation there so i'll think more uh focused around montpelier specifically for cjac i should i should remind us all that you that the by the by laws i guess do not require a person to live in montpelier to be on a, a montpelier committee isn't that correct yeah, and I got two folks uh, who I'm recruiting in Berlin and Barrie, so. 
Okay. Yeah. And we've had folks on the committee before outside of the city. So it's great. All right. Sweet. It would be sweeter if we had some results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we could take minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. And so Kelly, can we dive into the stuff from you of just like the training for the city, the website, the city committee application update and stipends? Yes. So um, taking it from the top um, with DEI, um, uh, specific training that's being offered right now um, is something actually um, through Carol's office um, that has been opened up to city staff and leadership. Um, and Carol, if you wanted to maybe share the details of that training, that would be good. And then from there, it'd be really sort of figuring out if we wanted to um, focus maybe a training um, on a topic within DEI or, um, you know, maybe do another session of this training. And who are you doing it with again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so Carol, if you want to provide yeah, the details, that would be really awesome. Uh, her name is Cheyenne Moliere, and she lives in St. Johnsbury, and uh, the, the curriculum is racial literacy, and it's based on three books. Um, so I, I don't know if we're reading all three of the books or if she's, I think she's going to take pieces of, of the three books because she said that, you know, like we're not reading one and then discussing it over a couple of sessions, but it's eight sessions once a month on Thursdays in person from 5.30 to 7.30 at City Hall. Um, racial literacy is, is what it is. And I, I'll, I can share that because I thought of offering it here too. We have three spots available right now. Um, we have, I think, 10, uh, between staff and volunteers, we have like 10 folks um, registered. And so there are already a couple people from the public and other departments that have uh, signed up with us. So I'm completely open to that. We can take 18. And so I want to fill all the spots and even have a wait list. Um, so, and I've told people that if they anticipate they might miss one or two sessions, whatever, I just want to, I just want to get all 18 spots filled. So I'll share that with you. The syllabus is actually pretty vague. Like each of the, she does list each of the ses sessions in the syllabus, but um, it's it's basically there's a reading and we're going to discuss the reading from the prior class. So, <laughs> you know, so I'm not, I, yeah. And I, and, you know, I don't know her work well, but she was recommended by another CJC director in St. Johnsbury. So that's what we're doing. And I felt a little bit under the gun to spend the money because it has to be spent by the end of June. Mm. Oh, mm. any of you who want to join, let me know. I'll put you on the list and I'm going to, um, it's next week starts next week on Thursday. And so is was this just kind of made available as an option to staff? Is that how we, we get people couple, in it? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was last week, Kelly. I can't remember when I sent it because my schedule has been like uh, insanely busy. <laughs> I can't remember when I sent it, but I did open it up to um to other departments and, already. And again, oh, oh, so it started, it started in your department and then you opened Yeah. Up. So we got, uh, oh. we got um, additional money in fiscal year 23 from the department of corrections, $5,000 oh, specifically okay. to do this work. And, um, you know, and there were, and there were no guidelines on how to use the money. Um, so, you know, other CJCs are doing different work. Somebody is you know, doing some work specifically around their strategic plan. And, um, you know, anyway, so I felt like this would be good for, I wanted something that was going to be directed to our volunteers, something our volunteers and staff would benefit from. Gotcha. And then realizing that, you know, I think people also, and I get this, are a little burned out on the topic right now. And so I'm appreciative that we have as many spots filled as we do. For staff, three of um, of the staff are doing it, and um, Kia is not going to do it because she's a black woman, and it wouldn't be appropriate for her to do this particular training. Um, so I left it up to her to decide if she wanted to participate. Um, but yeah, I, I it's what it is, and I'll share the syllabus and her bio again um, with this group, and then 
again with um, with the city so we can make sure we fill the spots. Yeah, do you, um, I wonder if there are things that we could do to make it just um, to encourage city staff to, to do this. Um, I don't know if you could like let them do it on work time or. Well, um, it's it. Uh, I mean, I know I know it's not it, scheduled during work time, but like if somebody could come in two hours late that that morning I mean, and do it. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming that I'm assuming that my staff is being paid to do it. Like I would think that it would be it's professional development. So yeah. I would assume Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, but anybody wants to take it. That's what they would do. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, so yeah. if if they took it um, in the evening hours, they would get comped for that time. Oh, that's great. Um, okay, good. Yeah, that doesn't happen where I work. <laughs> so. Yeah, it is oh. a really nice benefit um, yeah. working for the city that we do um, offer comp time, especially in these kinds of situations. Oh, great. Okay. Can you say, uh, Carol, that it's in person only? It's not being done on Zoom. Correct. Yeah, she insisted on that. I asked if if we could even do a hybrid, and she said no. So, going with it. <laughs> and then you said, is it available for committees? And then like committees can use stipends to be able to participate. So yeah, I'm like wondering if we should circle back to everyone that has reached out to us for trainings from other sure. committees and boards and offer this. So. Sure. I mean, again, there's only a few spots left and it starts next week. And, but, yeah. and the other thing was that I wasn't sure we would be able to afford all of the books. It's about $700 oh. worth of books. And I didn't want anybody to feel like the, buying the books was a barrier or getting the books was a barrier. So she waived her consulting fee of $500. And so we were able to work it out to buy all of the books, most okay. of them from through Bear Pond to use somebody local. So the books are available. Um, people can pick them up here in the office if we're here. Um, otherwise, you know, they'll get them at the first session. Okay. That's I'm going to try to provide snacks at everyone too, because it's 530. <laughs> People gonna, are going to want snacks. <laughs> no, that's great. That's really important. Yeah. yeah. I would have loved if we could ha have offered childcare also, mm -hmm. so Kelly and I have had some a little, some conversations about um, the stipend. So that's something that I would love to keep talking about, uh, changing the wording on um, how the stipends are distributed and what they can be used for. So should we skip down to that one? Yeah, any other thoughts, questions on the training? Um, yeah, I guess I'm just, before actually before moving on, I'm just like, cause there are like, I don't, like a hundred people who work for the city and it's like if there's 10 spots filled yeah just like knowing that there was more full staff training that then everyone wasn't able to get involved yeah I so I don't I, know where I'm going with that never mind uh, well, like, well um, if I might um because yeah. I, I'm curious about this myself um so yes so there are about 120 123 uh full-time permanent employees with the city um and you know I think if this is a goal that we have or that the committee has to have staff get training, um, you know, then we should strategize about that. Yeah. Um, and so if, you know, what I was thinking, and maybe you might consider this as a, you know, an option and then we can come up with other options for sure. I, I like options. Um, is that, you know, maybe perhaps this is kind of a pilot. And so we're using that $5,000 as a seed, which is really nice. And then we're leveraging that if, if this, this program works, well, then maybe perhaps it is something that we roll out to city staff um, and we do other sessions, um, you know, of a, either with, with the same instructor or of a similar nature so that it becomes a series instead of a one time thing. Um, so that then, you know, it's kind of ongoing and we are starting to kind of fold city staff in um, because I do think it is really important. Um, and I, I think um, based on, you know, sort of the work that we've already done around this um and gosh the, with the group uh creative, creative discourse. discourse yep I was like it's coming to me it's gonna get there oh, there it is creative <laughs> discourse um, so with that group I you know I, I want to be able to at some point pick up where we left off and really evaluate that and think about okay so what are the next steps you know what do we need to do and you know I think because of the nature of this work it's an ongoing conversation um, and, you know, we, we need to keep that going. And so I would like to keep that going for city staff. I do think that there's an opportunity here to maybe look at this in the lens of a pilot and then, you know, maybe 
keep it rolling forward. And then we, the strategy piece would be thinking about, you know, whether or not we would make this, you know, requirement or some sort of proportional goal of city staff to be trained up in this. I don't know. And that's, so that would be something for the committee to consider and recommend. Um, but I think from the city's perspective, um, I'm really interested to see how this goes, so that then we can kind of maybe implement um, future planning around it. Um, I'm Great. sorry, when, when, when fast, Carol, how many sessions altogether? Uh, Eight. So it's once a month until December. Okay. Which, you know, I, I, at first I thought, oh, maybe we want to do it twice a month and speed it up. But I think once a month is good because it gives you time to digest and, you know, really live it. And I agree with Kelly. Like, I, I really think there should be, even once this one is going, like we should be starting some other effort and making something available to folks in the city. And I say that because people are in all different places in terms of how they feel about even acknowledging that racism and um, mm. exists and that um, white supremacy is an issue, right? So um, I think that trying and trying different ways of helping people think about it and have the conversation is really important. And that's the way that we're gonna actually get to some, to some change that ongoing effort. And with our full-time jobs, it's like, oh, do I need to do this thing? This is my professional development. And, you know, I recognize the burnout factor um, on, on that too. And I hear that from my staff, you know, like I, I just need a break from having to think about how I'm being more inclusive and being more diverse and, you know, recognizing my own whiteness and all the biases I bring to the table. Like I hear that, so. And I feel it <laughs> too. Yeah, I guess I'm like, is it clear that this is all, this is targeting for white folks and like dealing with their white fragility and stuff in in the in the sessions or it's racial yeah. literacy? Okay. So it's you know really just it's having an understanding more, about what okay. what it means. Cool. Okay, thanks all. Uh, yeah, so I'm like, I don't know if there's more to talk about for that or if we should go on to talking about stipends. Yeah, I mean, maybe we can bring it back to a future yeah. a meeting just to kind of, you know, talk about how it's going and you know, think about the next steps. If that's... Uh, I have a, a question related to this. The Police Review Committee also addressed the question of training. So, uh, race training and stuff like that. Do you know what's going on over there, um, Kelly? Or do they they just monitor that themselves? Like for police staff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I I don't know of any specific trainings, but I can certainly check in with Chief Nordenson and see you know what they've got going on. Um, because I do know that they have done a lot of work, but I am not sure about specific trainings. I mean, one of the questions that comes up for me is, and mostly because these, you know, there are three who are still at the academy right now is what's the academy doing? Like, I, I feel like that would, should be a part of what the police academy is putting more emphasis on for law enforcement. And I have no idea. That's like trying to find out what that curriculum looks like is, it's kind of like trying to find out what driver's ed curriculum is all about. It's, it's tough. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when I was doing, I was on the police review committee, and when I was doing my research, I could get the the number of hours that they devoted to things, but never the, the the curriculum itself. Maybe occasionally a paragraph, but not. Yeah. not, not I don't know why it's not more transparent. It's like, what? <laughs> well, maybe that nobody has asked it to be. You know, um, could you know when? how much more more would they be willing to uh, to offer in terms of you know what what topics or what what's the reading list or something like that simple yeah. questions i think just asking this is, is a starting point i think who asks makes a difference too just saying because if it's me they're like oh whatever <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can sift through my notes and try to find out uh, the person with whom I had a conversation about the academy and ask that question. Um, yeah, be great. 
my notes are a pile of papers. It's just you know, so I, <laughs> it's it's an archaeological expedition. But I'll I'll see if I can uncover <laughs> that. So, Michael, you'll either ask or tell us who to ask. Yes. As okay. a if it comes from the city council or from something else. Great. Okay. Okay. You want to take on the next thing on the, the list? Great. Um, so the city website um, has been updated. And actually, if you don't mind, I think I can do this. I'll share my screen and just show you what the web page looks like right now um, and see what you think and see if that's um, something, you know, if there are the changes that you'd like to see. Cool. Okay. Okay. So here we go. Um, so um, we have been kind of combing through um, each of the community sites, and so CJAC included. And so what the question at hand was around membership. So we've got that reflected here. Um, and then we've got uh, the meeting schedule up above, um, and then just a little bit about the committee, um, such as the mission and current work. Um, can I ask a question about that that meeting schedule section? Sure. Um, I went there this morning to try to find the link, and um, it didn't really work. Didn't really didn't really work. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's <laughs> it was like a bunch really of clicking, helpful. and I, and then I gave up and finally just signed into my city email to get it from from yeah. the email. Yeah. No, that's Canada. really that's that's super helpful. I mean, we yeah. are trying to streamline that so that it's not um, so it is seamless. And in this particular instance, it wasn't. So thanks. <laughs> Um, I'll look into that for sure. And then for the members, it's, yeah, that Helen and Jeremy are no longer on the committee. Okay. All right. Right. That's right. Okay. But you know, aside from from my my little trouble this morning, I I think it looks really good. I think it has it's a nice concise description of what the committee does. It's nice, the way it's laid out with the columns. It's really easy to see the key information without too much scrolling. <clears throat> so I think it looks really good. Thank you, um, and I I will definitely update that um, for sure. And so with that, mm -hmm. that's good. I can kind of flip back as long as everybody else is, you know, good with what this looks like aside from the membership. Sorry about that. I'll definitely make sure that following this meeting today we get that updated. So I'm gonna stop my share because there's it's pretty straight ahead. Um unless you want me to keep it here. Oh good, okay. I mean, I, or I think the next thing is the committee application, and it looks like that hasn't been updated yet. I just no. like skipped over to it, and so yeah, I've just I don't know if there's anything to uh, that has been changed. If you if you want to share through that, but... um, so there is nothing that has been changed. Um, we have been internally talking about how to change that. Um, and honestly, the, it, there's no issue with changing it. It's just that we haven't gotten to it yet. Um, and. So that's where we're at. I, I do want to make sure that we do. Um, and so this week is a little bit slower. So I'm hoping to make some of those changes based on the committee meeting notes. Um, and then hopefully next time I'll report back that here it is. It's been updated um, because that's the goal. Um, one of the comments, though, that I did receive and uh, talking it through with staff is that, you know, if we don't ask about um, education, for instance, you know, then will we get a person's background? But I, I don't know that that necessarily matters, but I wanted to pose that to the group because people typically, when they would be answering those questions, they would share not only their interest, but why, you know, or, the, or their background. Um, but we also want to encourage a diverse background. Um, and so I just wanted to touch base with that and make sure that that's still, you know, what um, the sentiment is. So was the suggestion to to leave that off entirely? Yes. 
Mm. I think I think we felt really strongly about that because because we want people from with lived experience and from marginalized populations and that can be intimidating, you know, um, to folks. And I, I I don't think it's necessary for the work that well, we're doing. And just to say, like the language that we decided on was what talent, skills, education, credentials, and experience do you bring to this border committee. So I think it's still prompting people to share that if it's relevant. Great. Yeah. Yeah. No, that and, I, great, and I, that's all I really was wanting was just yeah. like a nice confirmation of like, yep, it's still kind of in there. It's just not the thing. It's not its, its own like separate, yeah, question. Okay, cool. Um, So I'll, I'll work on that. And Carol, we can work together on just making sure that that happens. <laughs> um, Okay, so then the next thing, let's see. I see how you just passed on that responsibility to me, <laughs> 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 Kelly. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> mostly carol just a second set of eyes yeah thanks to make sure that you know we're getting this done don't worry we'll we'll, get, and, we'll make it happen and just to say i think like we proposed removing some questions at the top and just wanting to see if the legal was okay with those too like that that could be an additional step of just like we proposed we proposed removing the question are related to any elective city council including by marriage since there is like a self recusal policy on this in the city and then removing the conflict of interest question altogether um, and just saying like, are you involved in any personal, professional, or business pursuit that would affect your ability to make fair and impartial recommendations as a member of a city advisory board or committee? Do you have any pending litigation against the committee? I think that'd be like a required question altogether, but um, just, yeah, recognizing like you don't have to be a voter or a resident of a certain age, um, but that those are required and starred, you know, required questions. Um, even though we don't need that for people to participate. So, um, but just wanting to make sure that legal was okay with that before making those changes too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, we can, we can double check. Cool. Um, great. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. There. No, all good. Um, so the next item, um, was around the stipends. Um, and so um, Carol and I have talked a little bit about this and I, I think, you know, the, you know, I don't see why we wouldn't come up with a recommendation to open up the stipends, stipends especially if it's related to city business. Um, but I don't, don't know if we wanna open it up further for conversation here. One of the things that I um, brought up was you know, it, I I love the idea that we can give somebody fifty dollars so that they can afford to pay somebody to do childcare. But how much easier would it be if we were a, able to hire a couple of childcare professionals to be at meetings where we knew we had folks who would be um, who, who where it would be difficult for them to attend the meeting? With you know, it'd be much easier if we had a room and two people, and you know, and um, three different families could bring their kids. They'd have snacks, they'd have toys for them, whatever, um, during that meeting time in the same building. So, you know, it, to make that an option instead and use the stipend to, to figure out how much that might cost. And then it'd be more of a process to figure out which at which meetings do we need to provide the childcare and then, you know, have somebody who's kind of on call um, that when somebody says, yes, I'm gonna need it, tonight, then, you know, they can show up and make it happen. I mean, I did this when I was working in Lamoille County doing substance use prevention and it worked and it worked great. And um, this young woman actually was, she would bring her daughter with her and that's the way she could do it. And she wanted to earn the extra money and it, it was fantastic and really appreciated by the folks that were um, showing up with their kids. So if we're going to provide childcare, do do we not need to be concerned about um, liability? You know, well, and that we're we already are a, a licensed childcare provider. The city is, but like, but not. I don't know exactly what you know what part of the city is and how that would work. But we're we're not licensed for city hall to be a childcare providing mm -hmm. place. We would have to have um, the staff do it. It couldn't just be you know somebody's teenage daughter coming in to do it. it yeah. Has to be so Arnie would have to be involved. Yeah, yeah, so Arnie would like would need to be involved in helping us provide that, is what you're saying. 
Yeah, I'm saying there's a lot involved that probably costs more than we have in the stipend budget, ultimately. Um, not saying we shouldn't do it, but a lot of considerations. Go ahead, Michael. Um, what about doing it as a kind of subcontract to good beginnings? Um, I don't that, think they're a child care provider. Yes, they are. I think they do some... Well, I I don't I don't I shouldn't be say so specific. I know they have programs for bringing kids together at where they where they are. And, and maybe we could inquire. I don't know. I mean, I think one of the things that we might want to do too is just poll the existing members that we have, um, and then as we are bringing new committee members on, um, you know, asking the question what you know does it work for you to get the 50 dollars stipend so that you can get child do you need child care you know just to have a better sense of of how many people actually need child care i mean i think just yeah going back to what carrie was saying and i think what we were hearing from cameron this last you know time we talked about this too is like we went with the stipends because it gives parents a lot more options and because the, the city has a lot of licensing things happening already around child care yeah. that adding in a different thing like it, they wouldn't yeah the physical building they wouldn't be able to do it in so then kids would have to go to a different build like there there was it just like added a whole lot more problems and that like because meetings happen every hour of every day that that like it makes yeah it the, the, the stipend was more of the lowest common denominator that would be able to support the most number of people and people could hire their their own folks but I get and so I do want to like make sure we can go back to talking about that but I guess like yeah can people use that stipend to pay for the city child care or people can't just like drop their kids off at the city's provided child care it's like you have to be in the system already right you have to be in the program yeah okay and who are you saying that was already I don't know. Arnie, Arnie, Arnie. McMillan, who's the rec director. Okay. I don't know that person. The other point that I brought up with Kelly, and I think I've brought it up here too, is that um, right now, for some reason, the decision was made a million years ago that um, Community Justice Center volunteers are not city appointed volunteers. And mm. so we're not eligible for the stipend. And, and, you know, our folks, I think, should be eligible for the stipend. So I don't know what, I mean, if, and if that's just a language change, then let's make the language changed around, around that. And in the same way, I don't think we're going to have many folks who it, our existing volunteers taking advantage of it, but I think it would really help us with recruiting people from marginalized populations, lived experience, and young families to be able to attend and want to participate. So um, I would, that's my pitch, is um, to not exclude our volunteers who put in hundreds of hours. I mean, our COSA teams meet three people once a week, and we've got like six COSA teams right now, right? So they put in a lot of hours for the city and um and they're not eligible for that stipend and then our you know we've got five panels plus a youth panel i think it'll really help us with the youth panel too so and that's an important um piece of the work that we're doing that is difficult to it's difficult to to recruit and retain teenagers and young adults on our youth panels and i think if they were provided with the stipend, they'd have more incentive to participate. And it might all go just toward that. I mean, I, you know, depending on who we get, but I would like to make it available. So I think, yeah, I think there's like overall lots of interest in expanding the stipends projects for, um, you know, uh, for for the country club road public hearings for other committees that may not be eligible like there's like a definitely a couple buckets of things that are not just committees and board meetings but for other like specific public meetings or for public meetings more broadly and so yeah just like think of like what what would the language change be that the city would need to approve in order to make that more available for participants do we 
have any sense or who who would know and how to make that proposal? That sounds like something Kelly could look into <laughs> for us. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if that's the if that's what the committee would like to do, I'm happy to bring something back for the next meeting as a, sort of a, a starting point to consider language. I think and that'd so, be great. Yeah, really helpful. Yeah, sure, no problem. Are there other buckets that we want to make sure get included to so be like participating in public hearings and public processes, um, and and other boards and committees that are not covered or not city appointed boards and committees um, that are you know very relevant to the city i think carrie you had previously talked about like canvassers for the country club road project um mm -hmm. but one it feels like the timing of that is you know i think that was proposed a few months ago and now things are kind of chugging along so that may be less relevant but like yeah, yeah. are there any other buckets of work that we want to make sure are included um i wonder about ex i mean things like providing food at at a meeting mm -hmm. You know, not just stipends, but like um, uh, at those country club road gatherings, if there's a little food, it just makes it so much more welcoming and inviting. And I think if we, uh, I mean, there are some people who are going to need their time covered to come to something like that. But there's a whole lot of other people for whom that's not the barrier. The barrier is more just feeling like this isn't really for me. It's not my scene. I don't belong. I'm not part of this group. And so anything that we can do to break down those walls a little bit, so sometimes just providing food or having it at a different time of day or in a different location, all that kind of stuff. Um, but so if we could use some of the money in ways other than just direct payments to people, that, that might open it up a little bit. I'm just, I'm wondering if we can just build in some flexibility to the language yeah. of how we use it so that then we can decide as we go. Yeah, that, that kind of was my point too. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, doing doing um, equity training in parallel to to these efforts, you know, that I think helps other departments and other committees and people who are on those committees be, just be thinking about like how we can better um, help people feel like they belong and that they they can participate. Because we I think personally, I think we have to really look at ourselves. It, when we're making decisions about how we design something, that's what makes a big difference. Thank you, Kelly, for taking that on. Um, I, I have a question about um, recruitment and, and all, the, uh, all how the, in how to get the word out. I don't know if any of us or any city committees um, participate in the Do Good Festival at, up at National Life every year. Um, and if maybe planning on participating and um, just having a table for, for, you know, not all the not all the city committees necessary, but there could be one table that list you know that has information about it there. And that's one way to get you know, people who are attending a fair, basically. Uh, and that's a lot of people in the city, as I as I understand it. I, I went to one of them, but I was away last year, so. I understand the like teas DJs. are playing. Wow, I didn't know this on the calendar. Okay, great, sorry. I understand that the CJC used to do it. And, you know, I came in in 2020, so we haven't, haven't done it, but it's something that I thought about um, the, in the last couple of weeks to get the information so we have a presence there. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great idea to, to have a presence at the Do Good Festival. I mean, I think you know, for us to recruit, we don't need panel volunteers. We have people that just show up and wanna be panel volunteers, which is great, but our advisory board and you know, for other, committees for the city, I think it's a great idea. Cool. Well, if we're going to do that, then we should get started, find out what the date is. Um, and July and... 15th. I just looked at that. Okay. Um, and and I, again, I think it may be, you know, more effective than, than trying to round up the committee chairs of all of the committees and have each one have a table, but to try to consolidate it so that, you know, there's somebody there who can hand out, you know, just information. 
if it's nothing more than uh, the the kind of narrative that Kelly's put up on our, you know, for each page, each committee have a page, and and sign up sheets that can then be distributed back to committee chairs or whatever wherever they need to go. But I think it, it involves fewer people, and it can you know consolidates the the, the space and also the focus. Yeah. Um, I think I maybe we'll just skip down to our last agenda item, um, city celebrations and recognitions. Um, just want to report back from Michael's initial research. I can, well, can you? Oh. Yeah, I'm going to actually. Poor Ke Kelly's getting all of this stuff, but uh, <laughs> it took us a while to connect, but we finally had a conversation about it. Um. So Kelly, maybe I'll I'll tr I'll take a stab at it, and you'll correct me uh, or get me back on track. What what it appears to have happened in this situation is that it was a it was not necessarily a public event. It was an event by the the city garage folks um, uh, for their staff, and they invited the city council, as I understand it. But I don't think. Uh, I don't think it was um, a, a, a kind of anybody come. Um, and as Kelly described it, as we were talking to it, it really is is um, in part an, op an opportunity for the staff there to sort of have a staff event. Um, and it was not meant to be anything more than really a way of consolidating or sort of making them feel part of a, a small community. So I don't know that getting too much deeper into this raises questions that we don't we don't want to answer we don't want to ask <laughs> about um about how how departments you know sort of try to create communities of their members um and if we start sort of putting clamps down on things like that um i i don't, I, don't, I think that maybe you know we're asking for more trouble these are not um as, as Kelly points out, they're not necessarily public. Um, they are not related to, um, you know, uh, the, the, I, I, I guess they're not necessarily related to religious or ethnic um, uh, identities. But in in the case of the St. Patrick's one, well, it was kind of you could call it a spring, a spring fling or something like that. So I don't know where we go from here. I mean, I think it, it really opens a, a big can of worms that 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 would be hard to sort of sort to separate and and sort out. If if I might, um, so I, I think you know having this brought to the committee's attention um, and talking about it is really good um, because I don't want to look away from it in terms of you know not having the conversation or not. Um, you know, giving it the space that it needs. Um, you know, I will share and just based on the conversation that Michael and I had, we, you know, we we don't uh, have a city policy at this point for these kinds of events. Um, this one in particular, you know, I would say that it's less about St. Patrick's Day than it is about um, the DPW folks sponsoring a citywide luncheon for staff. Um, and so it's it's not public in nature, um, but that being said, you know I think, you know somebody thought enough to to raise the concern, um, and so, you know I do think that we've got to at least talk about that a little bit, um, and and you know maybe I mean there's kind of two things here that I that I've been kind of trying to think about a little bit more um, and trying to get more information. Um, about what the intent was in the conversation. Um, because we do wanna be inclusive. We wanna make sure that everybody feels welcome and invited to attend these events. And if for some reason that wasn't the case, which it kind of seems like it is here, then you know, I, I wanna really understand that and make sure that we can be. Um, and so if that means that um, the St. Patrick's State designation is off-putting, um, then maybe perhaps we as city staff should be evaluating that. Um, you know, it is something that um, the DPW garage does take pride in um, because it's something that they do for the city. It's something that it's, and it's actually probably one of the only events that we have, and especially in light of the pandemic, 
um, that people have kind of come back to. So there's a little bit of trickiness here, although that doesn't mean that we shouldn't have the conversation um, and shouldn't, you know, be thinking about, you know, how that is put out um, because, you know, that that's kind of how these things continue, right? So it's kind of being in this spot where it's like, okay, well, what, you know, what recommendations would we kind of put on the table for this? I mean, and I think, you know, the, the, the sort of two minds, like one is that it's really about the people and getting together for a meal. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be associated with St. Patrick's Day per se. Um, and then secondly, um, if there were another event that somebody wanted to put forward to be recognized or to have an event around uh, that would be city supportive, then we should also talk about that too. Um, and think about like, well, what is, what does that mean? What, what would the, um, sort of criteria be like, what, how, how can we make sure that we are inclusive? Because I think that's also in this kind of, you know, like the point is that we do want people to feel welcome and to be able to participate in all city events, especially city staff. Um, and so we want to be able to break down those, you know, um, barriers if possible. So I think that's, you know, and so it's so Michael and I did talk about it and, you know, I, I want to make sure that we're, you know, really considering this because I don't want it to seem like we're not, we have an item on the table that needs consideration. And so kind of would leave it to the committee, um, there, but I wanted to just share those thoughts. And I want to follow up because I had, after having conversation with Kelly, I, um, did some follow-up with Kia, who's the one who raised it. And she had a couple of questions. One was, how many people of color are actually employed by the city? And I told her, I can think of one, which is her. Um, and she raised it because it, what, what came up for her, and she also made the point to me yesterday in our staff meeting that, that um, there was no acknowledgement even of Black History Month by the city, right? So when she saw this St. Patrick's Day thing happening, that's what kind of triggered her. And she made the point to me, and you know, I wasn't disagreeing with her. I was just trying to get a little more clarification about what this meant for her because of the way she brought it up. And she said, you know, that that was her example, um, and and that it's not that she didn't feel welcome going to a St. Patrick's Day thing, but it's really just the overall question of are we having the conversation about what it means? So I noticed that there isn't a Christmas party for all of the city staff every year, right? And maybe that's because of COVID, I don't know, but there isn't, and there aren't other. So it's interesting that, you know, what do we, which holidays do we choose to acknowledge for city staff? Which, you know, which are the ones that we get, where we get the day off? That makes a difference too, because we're not acknowledging even um, the Jewish holidays, right? So we just skip over those. There are no Jewish holidays that are an official holiday for city staff, but we do celebrate Christmas and New Year's and Easter and all of that sort of thing. So that was the point of her conversation. And I am fully in agreement with Kelly that we do need to keep having the conversation around this, not as a way to squash what they're doing with DPW. And I think it's, I made the, um, analogy to if I go, if I say we're going out to lunch or we're going bowling, which we did as staff, that's the same kind of thing. I think where that originated was a way for them to get together. And then they opened it up to the rest of the staff, which is an opportunity for a citywide thing. And it just happens to be connected to St. Patrick's Day for whatever reason. Maybe they have a significant number of Irish people or people who celebrate St. Pat Patrick's Day or it's March because it's like the beginning of spring. I don't know. But I think we really do need to, to um, address it. And um, the other point that Kia made was that, um, you know, because it's hard and it might, it might be uncomfortable for people to talk about doesn't mean we shouldn't be talking about it. Yeah, and I think like having it be just not a public event and just city is almost like more reason to talk about it. And so, um, and, and to bring it up. And I, I think, yeah, just to reiterate, I would like to say in a different way, what I think I've already been hearing is like, yeah, I don't, as the city is going back to having more events and like recognizing like days on the calendar and having community building opportunities of being mindful that of of what those are you know and that this is kind of an opportunity to make sure that um 
it's not just celebrations of like white Christian um, days on the calendar. And I think, right, if, if that means that, you know, yeah, there's like a lot of folks with Irish heritage at DPW, like let's like, yeah, I don't think it's like any ask of like, let's like not do historically like like loved and like recognized events but it's more about like add like how can that be additive to it you know and so right if there's like yeah a lot of uh folks of Chinese descent in the senior center let's do a a like let's you know how can we support them of having a Chinese New Year celebration that can be opened up to everyone but I think we all yeah we want to be really careful to not say what we can't have the the DPW have a St. Patrick's Day event and we need to make sure that it changes to being another event that people don't have any experience or history or like recognition in. I don't think that's by any means the ask here, but that um, I'm just like being more mindful of it. And I do want to parse it out from the other point that you're making, Carol, of like, I think that the question about like what days people get off and I, and I think that's like a, that's a different, that's like an HR issue, I think. And then this is more like, I think what events does the city recognize or what like days on the calendar does the city recognize is more, even if it's not, even if it's just public facing to other city staff, it is that, that's, that feels different to me than asking for other, you know, additional holidays to be celebrated on the calendar. Right. And if we were like 20% of people on staff all celebrated Chinese New Year and we didn't get takes Chinese New Year off that would be a different conversation but I don't as a predominantly white Christian you know city and city staff like wanting to be mindful like that that asking for other holidays and things off is a is more of an HR issue I think than recognizing other like cultural historic days on the calendar you know like just yeah being more being more mindful of that and so I thought and I'm I'm not I'm not suggesting that by any means I'm just saying that I mean if you look at the roots of of why those are the holidays that we celebrate right so there's a reason that those are the ones that are celebrated and you know turning that ship is like that be a huge project right like that because it's there are state holidays and federal holidays and all that I think just, but talking about it and being mindful of it, I think is in part the point that Kia is making is let's, let's keep having the conversation about what, what are we, what can we add and how, and even if it's not another holiday that we add, how are we talking about it? And is the city going to say like, yeah, remember it's black history month. And then if you look at the calendar, there's like a, a celebration month. There's something in every month of the year, right? Like there's domestic violence month in, in April and sexual violence month in I think October. So like there's all these. So it's a big, it, it's a big question. Um, and I'm not advocating that we change the holidays, but just to be mindful of like what we acknowledge. And so what, like who, like maybe as like a starting point, like who manages like the social media account and recognizes, you know, are there well, recognitions that happen there? You were, like- I was just um, having a very similar um, line of thinking. Um, so we are very fortunate um, to have Evelyn Prim start oh, full-time yeah. with the city as of like yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, and so she <laughs> is um, our, our communications coordinator and is responsible for our social media presence. Um, and we are also working through a lot of um, projects for her. Um, and so this one in particular, um, I, I don't, we, we don't have a strategy at this point, but we should, um, and we should talk about that. And so I think if that's the outcome here, like that's really good. And so I think um, we can, you know, uh, certainly, you know, just thinking about Black History Month, it is kind of like, oh yeah, we we didn't we didn't do anything, you know. It's like, yep, acknowledging that, and then trying to figure out a way to make sure that that doesn't happen again. But then also making sure that it's not just sort of another thing on the calendar because it's important, you know. And I think that you know it should be um, recognized. So um, certainly, I can work with Evelyn on maybe thinking about a strategy around these sorts of things. Um, and then I, the other thing that I was thinking about is, you know, through HR, we may, especially if we want to be more diverse, which we absolutely do, is we should be monitoring, 
you know, the composition of city staff. And we do have a couple more people of color, um, but they're sort of spread out throughout the city. And there's only, you know, really a few that would probably identify that way. Um, so, but I also think that, you know, making sure that for those city employees, you know, they know that they have a place here and that, you know, their, you know, background, their, you know, being is, is recognized. Um, just like, you know, the things that we take for granted, like St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. So I have to go because I have another meeting at nine. Um, so thank Thanks you for all. the conversation and I will see you all next yeah. time. And then, yeah, I think this is bringing up a different question for me too, of like how to create caucus spaces for people of color, queer mm -hmm. people who work for the city and just wanting to, you know, like that, that was something we started with creative discourse that didn't continue on during the pandemic. So um going to flag that for future conversation as well. So, okay. Thanks all. I also have to hop. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. See you guys. Bye.